Hi everyone, welcome to another Literacy Friday session. Today we continue our study on study skills or study methods that assist us with revision and research and we're looking specifically at literacy strategies. Today we're looking at the SQRQCQ study skill. It is really a numeracy based study skill but it has a lot in terms of reading comprehension. So it's a reading comprehension that is geared at assisting students to solving math worded problems. So it's specifically for math worded problems. In today's session, we are going to actually use this strategy and apply it to some math worded problems. But before we apply it, let me just go through the steps. Step one, survey. And that's the first S in SQRQCQ. So just as in our previous lessons, what we did with survey, we're doing the same with this math problem. And you're just identifying the key terminologies that are in the problem, jot them down. Decide if there are any words that you need to check the meaning of before trying to solve the problem. So if you can figure out these key terminologies from beginning, you will flow better later. So just identify the key words and decide if there are any that you need to check out the meaning of before proceeding. Step two, question. And as the name suggests, there are a number of spots where we will do questioning. But the first question we're asking ourselves is what is required of us? So ponder what is being required of you and write that in question form. Example, what is the area of the triangle? How much more money will she need to purchase the candy? Step three, read. When you're reading, you're actually looking at all of the details. Note all of the details, read in-depthly, and write down the main points. Make notes of the key information. Step four, question. And this is the second set of questions that we're going to form formulate in our minds. So you're asking yourself the following questions. How will I solve this problem? What formula will I need to use to assist me in solving this problem? For example, if the problem required that we find the volume of a tank, then we could write down volume equal length times weight times height. And we jot that down on our paper simply because we have to be able to remember this formula later when we are doing our calculation. So we actually jot down the formula that we will use. Step five, compute or construct. So when we're at step five, we apply the mathematical principle or the formula that were necessary. We draw any diagrams, any symbols, any charts, any tables, any sort of illustration that may be required. So we actually solve the problem at that time. And then for step six, our last question, we're checking ourselves to ask ourselves, if we are correct. So you can ask the following questions to check yourself. Am I correct? How can I tell? Did I follow the steps carefully? Did I use the correct formula? And all these questions will enable us to be sure of our answer, especially if we have to do a presentation after or we have to submit our work. It's good to edit before doing such submission. All right, so it's time to apply the SQRQCQ. So first we survey and here goes our question. It says a tabletop measures 25 inches by 18 inches. Find the perimeter of the tabletop. So we just briefly look at it and then three terminologies I believe are popping out. Tabletop, perimeter and that symbol. And I knew from previous experience that it means inches. So I looked at it, I decided, are there any things that I need to read about or be sure of before proceeding? So maybe I was taught about perimeter in class. If I didn't remember, I would have to revisit those notes, then jot down perimeter means total distance around. I would write down the meaning for the symbol and write that it's inches and this will guide my understanding throughout this process. <laughs> I also made a notation of the fact that tabletops are usually rectangular or square and based on the fact that they're given me two dimensions, one seems to be length, one seems to be width, I could conclude that it may be a rectangular tabletop but I'm not ready to jot that down as yet. 
Now it's time for step two, which is to formulate my first question about what is required of me. So from it, the question that is, I gather that I need to find perimeter. So I wrote down what is the perimeter. That was SQ. Now it's time for our read. So I'm reading fully the question and I'm making jottings as to exactly what is needed. So I already know that what is necessary is the perimeter. So I would have jotted that down. I'm now going to just restate briefly the main information. So the following was what I gathered from the question. One, the length and width are given. Length is 18 inches with 25 inches, or it could be the next way around, but it doesn't really matter right now. And I'm supposed to find the perimeter. Based on the fact that only two distances are given, we can conclude that the tabletop is most likely rectangular. If it was square, then only one dimension would have been given, suggesting that all sides are equal. Now it's time for step four question again. So this is my second set of questioning. And this time I'm specifically asking myself, what formula will I need to use? How do we find perimeter of a rectangle? So I find out the formula, I jot it down. This is to refresh my memory. Formula length plus weight times two. Or two times the length plus two times the weight for a rectangle. And then that will make the perimeter. Now, sometimes we just say it's good enough to know the formula. No, we need to jot down the formula. That, will, that way we will actually follow the procedure step by step. We won't miss any data. We won't have to flip any pages to go and get the same data that we need. Now that we know which formula we will be applying, it's now time to compute. So I've written the formula and then I'm now making the calculation. So I'm having 18 inches plus 25 inches, multiply that by two. We know that we can do the multiplication bit by bit. So I did two times 18 equals 36, two times 25 equals 50. I added it up. I got 86 inches as the perimeter. And now I'm ready for a last step. There. And with my last step, once more questioning self, but this time my question is how can I be sure that 86 inches is the answer? How am I sure that this is the perimeter? So I drop a diagram to illustrate and I do both sides being equal. Um, that's the adjacent sides and I decided to work the math a different way to add it to see if I get 86 and voila, I was correct. So I now know that I can proceed by submitting my work. Let's now try problem number two. And just like the previous problem, we have to do the steps in order. So we have to begin with surveying. So I read the problem and I surveyed and I realized that the word profit, the word loss, and the word percentage are popping out. So I jot down my key terminologies. Profit meaning gain after selling, loss meaning having less than the original price. And now I'm at questioning. Did Cindy lose or did Cindy gain? And what was her profit or loss percentage? That's what they want us to find out. So I logged the key data from the question. The question gave me the information about how much you paid for the 100 pence, how much you sold each for. And now I'm at my step four, which is to formulate question about how will I solve it. And I came up with two strategies. One, either I could firstly multiply the selling price by 100 or divide the cost price by 100 to find the cost for the individual unit. So I could either find out first how much did she send each for, or first multiply the selling price by 100 to find out her total selling price. Then I would subtract the subtract to find the difference. That way I know the original cost and work out if it was a profit or a loss. Now it's time to compute and I decided to do the multiplication method first. So first I multiplied the $2.50 by 100 to get the total cost for that she, the to total selling price, sorry, after she would have sold each 100 unit and I got $250. Now the $250, the selling price was higher than the cost price and so naturally she had a profit. I then worked out the difference and 
the difference turned out to be $150. So her profit was $150 after selling all 100 units. But I wasn't asked to find just the profit or loss. I was asked to find a percentage. So I'm not finished as yet. So therefore I had to calculate the profit percentage. Now, since I'd already identified that formula from earlier, I'm now able to just apply it. So I put the profit over the total cost price, multiplied it by 100, and I got 150%. So her profit percentage was 150%. And now I'm at the last step, which is to question if this is correct. So I'm now checking, which is the final step. And based on what we saw, we would have identified that 150% of the cost price should be the profit. The profit we would have concluded was $150. So we're just checking if it really works out to be $150. And yes, 150% of the $100 really did work out to be $150. And then they would have given us that each unit she sold for $2.50. So let's try and prove if that's what she really sold it for. So the total selling price should be the original original cost for the 100 plus the $150 profit we worked it out to be $250 so she actually made a total of $250 after selling all units and since they would have given us the selling price for each individual pen we now can work it out to see if that's correct by dividing by 100 so since there were 100 pens that she sold and she would have received total selling price $250. All we needed to do was, so we divide by 100 and we found where each pen was sold for $2.50. And that's exactly what the statement had said. So we can now conclude that we were correct in saying that her profit percentage was 150%. I really hope this video and the strategy itself would have assisted someone to better be able to handle math worded problems.